Hello, welcome you all to my Azure Infi Learning Channel. In Endodontics, today our topic is pulp pain and diagnostic aids. So let's define pain. Pain is a sensation of discomfort or distress that results from the stimulation of nerve endings. This dental pulp sensation is controlled by A delta fibers and C F and nerve fibers. So these A delta fibers are larger myelinated nerves. That enter the root canal and is divided into smaller branches. A delta fiber receives the pain that is quick, sharp, and momentary pain, and this dissipates quickly on removal of the stimulus. The association of A delta fibers with odontoblastic cell layers is referred to as pulpodentinal complex. Other is C fibers, sensation of slow chronic pain, which is the burning and acting type. Next is there are odontogenic pain and non-odontogenic pain. Odontogenic pain, there are purple pain, parental region. Most common cause of purple pain is reversible pulpitis, irreversible pulpitis, dentine sensitivity, and necrotic pulp. The pain of parental region, it is type of deep somatic pain. And this is due to the presence of proprioceptive fibers. Most common cause of parental pain are acute apical periodontitis, acute apical abscess, adrenal abscess, periconitis, and chronic apical periodontitis. Phantom tooth pain. When there is persistent pain after RCT for more than six months, and this pain is not attributed to RCT, it is assumed to occur due to the upregulation of C4 genes. This phantom tooth pain is also termed as DFN patient, and the incidence is about three to six percent. Others are Pain of non odontogenic origin. Pain, pain due to musculoskeletal origin like muscle, joint, ligaments, or deep tissues are felt as tooth pain. There can be toothache due to common muscle leading to myofascial pain, is musator and temporalis muscle. In myofascial pain, pain is dull and constant on functioning like chewing. Palpation of muscles induces pain. Anesthetizing the tooth does not reduce pain. And when the anesthesia is given to the muscles, pain is reduced. This myofascial pain requires diagnostic tools such as pulp vitality testing of the affected tooth, identifying the trigger point on muscles with lack of tooth infection. Local anesthetic block is given to eliminate the affected tooth. Anesthesia is given to the muscle to check for the pain. A treatment of myofascial pain is analgesics are given with muscle relaxant in case of severe pain. Next is neurovascular pain. This pain is due to trigeminal neuralgia or trigeminal neuropathy. It also leads to tooth pain. There is migraine cluster headaches which can lead to localized pain and this pain is unilateral pain. This neuralgia pain is bright and paroxysmal and in myofascial pain the pain is dull and constant pain. There is sometimes cardiac pain that is referred to tooth. This referred pain due to underlying cardiac problem and there are some other features of cardiac pain such as pain in the left arm, shoulder and neck. This pain radiates to the tooth also. There is a term barodontalgia. This is tooth related pain experienced when there is change in ambient pressure in case of scuba diving and flying. Next is intense continuous pain that is relieved only by cold is very diagnostic of irreversible pulpitis. Moving on to next is diagnostic tests. So various tests are performed to check the vitality of the tooth. First is percussion. When there is sharp pain, it indicates periradicular inflammation and when there is mild to moderate pain, it indicates periodontal inflammation. Next is palpation. When there is positive response, it indicates periradicular inflammation. Now periodontal probing. In pa a blunt calibrated probe is used to explore the integrity of gingival sulcus around, the, around each tooth. When there is narrow pocket, it indicates root fracture or, or pathosis of pulpal origin. When there is broad lesion, it indicates disease of periodontal origin. To distinguish between periodontal origin from pulpal origin, thermal and EPT along with periodontal probing are essential. Next test is cold test. When there is intense prolonged pain, it indicates irreversible pulpitis. And when there is no response, then the pulp is necrotic. There can be false negative and false positive results. In case of calcified canal, there is false negative result. And if cold sensation is transferred to vital teeth or gingiva, 
then false positive test results to test for cold test dry ice carbon dioxide no dichlor difluoromethane is used or tetrafluoroethane is used disadvantage of this carbon dioxide no is that it causes infarction lines in enamel this cold test is an excellent way to locate pain next come to heat test when there is no response when the pulp is non vital when there is mild to moderate pain and this subsides on removing stimulus then the pulp is vital when there is strong pulpal response of pain and it subsides 1 to 2 seconds on removing stimulus then it is reversible pulpitis and in case when there is moderate to strong painful response that lingers for several seconds when the stimulus is removed this is irreversible pulpitis for heat test gutta percha sticks which are heated is most commonly used other things which are used for heat tests are hot air hot water hot burnishers next is electric pulp test or ept test this ept test is a pulp test and electric current is passed which stimulates the sensory nerves of dental pulp this ept test suggests that tooth is vital or necrotic when the reading is between 1 to 79 then the tooth is vital and the, when the ept reading is more than 80 depict that the pulp is necrotic this ept has high rate of false positive and false negative result and this ept is contraindicated in cardiac pacemaker patients so for false positive response with ept here the pulp is necrotic and yet the pain sensation is felt reasons are electrode or conductor is in contact with metal restoration or gingiva when there is liquefaction necrosis that may conduct current to attachment apparatus and when there is failure to isolate or dry the tooth for false negative response with ept in this case the pulp is vital but patient does not respond reasons are patient is heavily pre medicated with analgesics alcohol or tranquilizers when there is inadequate contact with electrode or conductor and in amor in case of recently traumatized tooth when there is calcification of canals or in case of recently erupted tooth which has immature apex next test is laser doppler flowmetry this is non invasive method and it is electro optical technique it measures the blood flow in this technique helium neon laser light beam is directed into the tooth light that contacts a moving object is doppler shifted and a signal is produced as the red blood cell represents the majority of moving object within the tooth measurement of back scattered light serves as index for peripheral blood flow this laser doppler flowmetry detects oxyhemoglobin level or pulsation in pulp when there is adequate perfusion it shows pulp is vital next test is pulp oximetry this oximetry refers to determination of percentage of oxygen saturation of circulating arterial blood probe sensor consists of two light emitting diodes one is red light transmitted in the range of 640 and the another is infrared light that is 900 this photo detector is placed on the opposite side of vascular bed in pulse oximetry the probe is placed on the labial surface of the tooth crown and the ideal placement of the probe is in the middle third of the crown then sensor is placed on the palatal surface well oxygenated blood appears bright red so there are other diagnostic tests which checks the vitality of the tooth like test cavity an excess cavity is cut into dentin without local anesthesia without local anesthesia when there is sensitivity or pain it indicates that pulp is vital next is selective anesthesia this can be used in case of referred pain and it distinguishes whether the source of pain is mandibular or maxillary it is less useful for distinguishing pain from adjacent teeth as the anesthetic solution may diffuse laterally next test is sinus tract exploration where a sinus tract is present it may be possible to insert a small gutta percha point and the radiograph is taken and it traces the path next is mobility test when there is 2 to 3 mm movement or depression then it is a poor candidate for rct next is trans illumination test trans illumination with fiber optic lights useful in diagnosis of cracks of teeth light from fiber optic is applied from buccal surface next is caries removal when the soft caries is removed with hand instruments which leads to exposure of pulp it indicates irreversible pulpitis next is radiographs these radiographs findings may be used there is loss of lamina dura laterally or apically pulp is affected frank perry radicular radiolucency indicates that the pulp is necrotic radiographs may show pulp chamber 
or root canal constriction which explain reduced responses to pulp there is periapical lesion of endodontic origin in this case lamina dura is lost apically there may be radiolucency at the apex radiolucency tends to resembles a hanging drop and tooth has a necrotic pulp another is pulpal lesion of endodontic region here there is altered pulp space enlargement seen in internal resorption there is diffuse calcification in chamber there are pulp stone and pulp chambers or canal calcification that's all for today thank you all